So one of my absolute favorite things about this time of year is that pretty much in every hedgerow, there is something edible. And I'm definitely no expert in foraging really, but you know, this one is a very common one that a lot of people recognize, which is Ramson's, also known as wild garlic. And before you even see it, you often smell it. And you can eat the leaves and you can eat the flowers and it just, it tastes just exactly like garlic. And you can obviously add it to meals uh, for flavor. Actually, I'll probably gather some and um, have some as part of my dinner tonight. So all of this right here, all of that is all wild garlic. You know, once you're familiar with what it looks like, it's absolutely unmistakable. And uh, my favorite bit are the flowers. And you can just eat these. And they're just so tasty. It's like garlic, but not as like overpowering. So beautiful, all the white ramps and flowers. Actually, I think one of the reasons I love it so much is because I feel quite nostalgic. Because when I first started sleeping outdoors, it was this time, it was exactly this time of year. And so I just remember all the white flowers being out. At the time I had no idea what the flower was, but I just remember that being like a really distinctive thing because, you know, they really are, like you can just sort of see, they're really out in abundance. So yeah, it just brings me right back to like, when I first started all this, so feeling quite nostalgic. And actually, so today is Saturday the 29th of April, I think. And on the 1st of May, which is on Monday, the 1st of May is my three year anniversary since, you know, the first night of me sleeping outdoors as a kind of lifestyle. Three years. I'm also turning 30 on Friday, so you know, three years out in the forest, 30 years alive. That means I've slept out in the forest for a tenth of my entire life, which is mad. So yeah, three years ago was my first ever night. I've got a photo of my setup that night and uh, I'll put it on screen right now. And that first night, I just remember like, I don't know, it's like stepping into like Narnia or something like that. Just. For me, it was just this brand new experience, stepping out completely into the unknown. Wasn't sure if I'd last two nights before I was like, had enough of this, I'm heading back indoors. But I knew after that first night, I was just like, I love this, it's so good. And that feeling of heading into work the next day, it was just like a normal like Tuesday or something like that, you know? But I just slept out in the forest, out in the wild. I don't know, it's just so good. But when I look back at that photo, my tarp is all wonky, set everything up wrong. I remember not sleeping particularly well. It was just such a steep learning curve. And every night was just this brand new, like, where should I go tonight? Kind of experience. And uh, yeah, absolutely loved it. So good. All right, I think this place looks perfect. Looks really good. I think I'm just gonna quickly set up my hammock and tarp and then I will get on with making my dinner. Okay, so I thought I might try a uh, technique that I don't think I've used before on the vlog. I've done it a few times in real life, but, um, but this fungus here, it's uh, called a cramp ball fungus, uh, also King Alfred's cake. Uh, and this is a brilliant fungus for lighting fires, basically. Uh, and yeah, you can actually light fires with it quite easily. Okay, so this is our cramp ball fungus here. Normally it's much more like, this one's quite soft, I mean, it's much like harder, uh, but it's always quite brittle. But see if we can get some of this lit and then uh, take it from there, I guess. There we are. Yeah, 
You can see that just took a spark so easily. Okay, now the tricky bit, which is blowing it into flame. I, I've got a feeling like these are a bit too thick, but we'll give it a go. Just pop that in there. Yeah, try not to burn myself. Also, I'll pop that one in as well. Give it more of a chance. Whenever I do this, I always give myself a head rush. Head rush! Come on! There we are. Got my flame now, which is great. Try not to stifle the flame. Great. So my fire's all nicely set up now. So, uh, yeah, just gonna get some dinner on the go now. So I got some pasta here, got some salt and pepper, got this tomato and vegetable pasta sauce. And then I've got my courgette here. Uh, and then here, I've just got my ramsons or wild garlic that I collected earlier. And then nice bit of fresh mozzarella, which I'll just slice over the top at the end, I think. Nice. So my absolute favorite way of cooking courgette is uh, literally just to kind of grill it like this on the side of the fire. Because courgettes are just so like naturally juicy, it kind of, it, it both kind of grills and then also boils in its own kind of juices. And it's just, it, it's just my favorite way of cooking courgette and it's, it's, just, it's really, really tasty. And then once it's cooked, I slice it up and add it to my meal. So I literally just kind of skewer it like that. Yeah, perfect. And then uh, just like relatively near the fire, I'll just dig that into the ground. Yeah, basically every so often I'll just, I'll twist it round until it's like evenly cooked on all sides. And then I guess the last thing, just my, uh, my pasta here. Normally with this billy can, I'd make a, a pot hanger which hangs over the top. But actually, you know, what you can do so much of the time, which works just as well, is uh, just literally put it down next to the fire. That should start boiling quite quickly. I'll come back and check at it. And then once it's boiling, add my pasta in. And obviously pasta only takes like, however long it takes. It's well and truly really dark now, so I'm gonna get my trusty head torch out. Great. <laughs> it's actually really late. It's like half past eight, quarter to nine now. But never mind, it's all done now. So just gonna grab this. So good. Let's get some of this pasta sauce. So this is my courgette, really nicely done. Nice. I love courgette. So good. And then just a bit of wild garlic. On the top. And my mozzarella. <laughs> Look at that. I love mozzarella. Probably definitely too much for one person, but never. Right, not the prettiest thing in the world, but it's definitely gonna be pretty tasty.
Thank <laughs> you.